Hey, here it is. Okay, thanks everyone. And thanks for joining. Welcome to the class number two. Okay. So in this class, we will be covering some of the very important concepts about the Vedic astrology. You need to understand these concepts because that gives you a very strong fundamental connection with how the astrology works. And it's also about the ancient uh, Vedic culture that how they all found this information and how the whole science of the universe and the whole science of spirituality is all embedded into one, one horoscope just by having 12 houses. Okay. So very important lecture today. And the more you will watch it, the more you will think about it, the things will become more clear in your mind. Okay. So, <clears throat> so last week we covered what are the planets in terms of what energies do they represent? Sun is our soul. You should always keep this copy in front of you unless you remember this, okay? So next time I ask you the question, what does Jupiter represent? You should know it's our wisdom. It's an expansion. It's an intelligence. Instead, intelligence of seeking knowledge and wisdom and making you duty bound. Okay? Saturn is your pain and transformation. Mars is our valor, courage. Venus is our love, compassion, luxuries, desires, lust. Mercury is your logical mind, analytical mind. So these are a very important concept of planets because ultimately what we are going to do is we're going to take this, this classification of planets and put it on the horoscope and then see what are they representing. Horoscope means the chart of 12 houses. This is the holy grail of all astrology, the 12 houses here. I'm going to try to draw it here with my with a new pen. Let's see if I've been able to. So this is a complete... Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back. So this is a complete holy grail of astrology. If you know how to map the planets, the energies into these houses. Now, we know this is house one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other than these houses showing us the significance or the particular domains of our life. And in our later slide, I will show you first house means what, second house means what, what are the domains of our life they represent. But other than the domains, they also represent some very strong points, very strong about points about our character, about our life, about our needs, spiritual inclination, and also how the whole personality is being mapped together in these houses. And to understand this better, I'm going to share my next screen. So this is how you see that, okay? This is how you see that each house is representation of one of the strongest element about our life, okay? So these are four major elements, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. Our life is all surrounded up within the brackets of these four elements. Dharma means righteous, being truthful, knowledgeable, the person who has wisdom, who is a duty bound and always remain within the ethics, righteous ethics of their life. Artha means accumulation. These are the houses which gives us the accumulation of wealth, gains, knowledge, material gains. And they, they remain in this order. The first house is always dharma. Second is artha. Artha means accumulation of wealth, accumulation of knowledge, accumulation of material gains. Dharma means being righteous. Kama means your desires, your fulfillment of your desires, your sensory pleasures. That is your kama. And then moksha means your spiritual enlightenment, liberation, freedom from bondage. If you understand this thing, Clearly, you can understand someone's nature very, very easily. Someone's physical attributes or what, what is their approach towards life? Because ultimately, the human life always remains surrounded by the four elements of these dharma, artha, kama, and mocha. And how you balance this, the person who can balance everything is the real man real person, real human being. So 
if you see the, the order, the first house is always dharma. Dharma, artha, kama, moksha. Then again, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. Then again, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. So if you see the first house, fifth house and ninth house. First house, fifth house and ninth house. That's the reason we are called, we call that these three houses are the real triangle tripod of your destiny. Because everything what is duty bound, what is your knowledge, your wisdom, your ethics, and your destiny is governed by these three houses. If you have very strong planets in these three houses, you are a person bound by your duties and ethics. And I'll show you how to see that instantly. These three houses are the most important houses in astrology. House number one, five, and nine. Whenever you open someone's chart, always give a glance to these three houses first. Then you see the Artha. Artha is accumulation of wealth. So first house is house of your, your physical body, the manifestation of your body in this world. Fifth is house of your creativity, your intelligence, accumulation of your knowledge, and the previous life karmas you're bringing in. And ninth is your wisdom, your fortune, your, your learnings, higher learnings. Everything is seen from the ninth house. These three houses are the called the dharma sthan, the place where the righteous act, wisdom, and duty-bound elements of your life live. The, these are the very strong domains of your life. If you talk about the artha, see, second house is house of finances. Second house is house of knowledge accumulation. Second house is house of family. So second house, sixth house, house is house of your job, your service you provide to others. And your accumulation of bank balance is also seen from second house and sixth house. And tenth house is house of your career, your karmas. So these three triangles, these three triangles, see, this is a triangle here again. This triangle talks about your accumulation of your material gains in this life. And the karma is your fulfillment of your desires. Third house is karma. Why? Because third house is your self-efforts. Self-efforts. How much you put in your self-efforts to fulfill the desires of your life. This is again a triangle. Karma, karma, and karma. And if you notice very clearly, this is an opposite of dharma. See, dharma is a, this triangle. And karma is an opposite triangle. The more you are becoming calm, karma means more lustful and greedy, towards the love, sex, sensory pleasure, happiness, enjoyment of your life, the more you are opposite of the dharma. So this house third, seventh is your sexual pleasures, seventh is your or, all your partnerships, all your relationships in life. Third is your self-efforts to gain material benefits in life, your fulfillment of your desires. Seventh is the house when you meet your partners, when you have a relationship, your sexual enjoyments are seen from the seventh house. And eleventh is also all your gains. You get one gain in life and you are now searching for the second thing. The second, the second gain has been fulfilled. You are looking for the third one. So this is the house of your desires. One desire leads to another, another to another, another to another. So that's why the third house, sorry, the eleventh house, which is house of your gains, becomes again the house of karma. And finally, the house of moksha. If you see the moksha, this is a triangle here. Moksha, moksha, and moksha. And why, why this triangle? Twelfth is house of your liberation, your freedom, your spiritual life. Eighth is house of your death. And fourth is house of your mother and your homeland where you've been born. So freedom from these three things is moksha. Death is a freedom. Spiritual journey, life after death is 12th house. Spiritual awakening, enlightenment. And the fourth house where you've been born as a home country and in the lap of your mother. And also it's a ninth house from the, the eighth house. So it shows the, the departure of the soul. Ninth is the house of voyage. And from here it's a ninth house. So if you understand these four concepts, you can open any person's chart and see what are they all about. Instantly by looking at their ascendant lord sitting in which house. Your ascendant lord, so which is, what is ascendant lord? The first house, lord is your ascendant lord. 
the planet which rules your first house is your ascendant lord. This is a basic. So I'm going to go back here. Whatever the zodiac sign comes here, if the zodiac sign is one, means Aries, Mars is your ascendant lord. Mars becomes a prime minister of the whole chart. If your ascendant is, is 12, let's say 12 here, then Jupiter becomes the prime minister of the chart. So if you have 12 here, then Jupiter. If you have two here, then Taurus. If you have three here, then Mercury. Four here, then Cancer. So ascendant lord is what you are giving back to the world. I put that in one of the slides here. I'm going to show you. So then I'm going to show you some of the, some of the examples also. See here. Your ascendant lord is what you do. There are three major tripods, the planets, tripod planets of your life is your sun, moon, and ascendant lord. Sun represents your soul. It says who you are, who you are, your astitva. In Sanskrit, it's called I am, me, myself, my pride, my ego, my status. Moon is how you feel, bhok tritva, how you feel emotionally as the world is treating you. Where is your emotions? Where are your subconscious? What do you think? What do you feel? An ascendant is what you are giving back to the world. What you do, Kar Tritva, is your ascendant lord. Now open your chart and see where is your ascendant lord sitting. Have you ever noticed that? Open your charts and see where is your ascendant lord sitting and map it on this is in this diagram. Dennis, you tell me where is your where is your ascendant lord sitting? Which is your ascendant lord? Tell it to the class. What is your first house and where is your ascendant lord sitting? My ascendant lord is the moon Why? and it because, sits in the... No, but your ascendant lord is moon because you have four here. Yeah, I have it number four cancer, there. Right? Yeah, which is cancer. So, and it sits in the first house also. The moon sits in the first house. Look at the cuspal chart, not the lagana chart. On the cuspal? Yeah. The, oh, the it sits in the 12th house. Yes. So always see, last class, I told you, always look at the planets in the cuspal chart not in the Lagna chart. You're still making the mistakes. Planet position is always seen in the Kaspal chart. So again, your moon is sitting in which house? In the, in the 12th house. 12th house represents what? Most, Moksha yeah. means what? Spiritual, enlightenment, liberation, freedom from bondage. And this is the goal of your life. Oh, this is so neat. Michael, your turn. Tell me what is your ascendant sign? Um, it's Taurus. Taurus is ruled by what planet? Venus. Venus is sitting in Cuspal chart, what house? In, um, in, it's in, one second, um, oh, uh, 12th house. 12th house represents what? Moksha. Moksha is what? That is... Moksha is uh, one second. One second. Look at my slide. Uh, it's it's a uh, spiritual enlightenment, liberation, freedom from bondage. Yes. I hear something. Yeah. Gaurav, your what is your ascendant sign? May I uh, Capricorn? Sat ruled by Saturn. Where is Saturn sitting in your chart? Saturn is uh, in KP chart. It is one fifth fifth house. Fifth house represents what? Fifth house is creative kids. No, no, no. In, in this chart, in this horoscope, what I'm showing right now. Dharma. Dharma, yes. Dharma represents <laughs> what? Uh, righteousness, true knowledge, wisdom. Beauty and ethics. Right? Yeah. And I'm going to show you the chart of Gagan, Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy is, he will join later. Let's see his chart. This will tell you instantly why you are learning astrology? Look at Jimmy's chart. Okay, someone tell me what is his ascendant lord? Michael, you go first. Tell me Jimmy's ascendant lord. Libra. Libra, very good. Who is the Venus. lord of Libra? Venus. Where is Venus sitting in his chart? Venus is in his uh, uh, fifth, uh, wait, one, two, three, fifth house. Fifth house represents what? 
This house represents um, uh, oh, value. Back to this slide. We are, okay. This slide. We are talking about only four elements right now. Look at this oh, okay. slide. So that was d d Dharma, and Dharma is uh, righteousness, truth, knowledge, wisdom, duty, and ethics. Yes, absolutely. See, you can instantly see the persons, and I show you something more here, right? So I'm going to show you my chart also, okay? So you guys are all okay sharing each other's chart in the class? Anybody has any objections, problems? Just let me know, right? Okay, because this is how we'll all learn together, right? We have to share our knowledge, our wisdom, and our charts also. And I'm not shying away showing you my chart also, okay? You're my student. I'm your guru. I should show you my chart also. You're more than welcome to look at my chart. I don't care. Thank you. So my son and lord Gaurav, which is my son and lord here? Cancer. Cancer is ruled by what? Uh, moon. Moon is sitting in which house? Moon is in uh, 11th. 12th, sorry. Yes. And 12th also presents Moksha. House. Dharma, Artha, Moksha. Moksha. Correct. Right? So this is where my duty is. This is where my focus is. Because the, the Ascendant Law talks about what you do in this world. Am I right? Now see yeah. the chart of Donald Trump. And you can open anyone's chart here. The more you will start learning, you will start seeing that how this science gets fit into someone's character so easily. So I'm going to go open the chart of, let's say, leaders, Donald Trump. Okay. Okay. Michael Donald Trump, Ascendant Lord. Uh, it's uh, the fifth, so it's, uh, it's uh, Leo. Awesome. And Leo is ruled by which planet? Leo is ruled by sun, uh, the sun. Sun is sitting in? Sun is sitting in the 10th uh, house. 10th house is Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Um, you had it on the screen, take it down. Yeah, um, I'm going to bring it screen here. Yeah, sorry. So 10th um, house is all about? Artha. Uh, can you see the screen now? I don't see it. Uh, Houses. I'm gonna write that down. Artha. Okay, here we go. Ten thousand. This is ten thousand, right? Yeah. Artha. Yeah, Artha. Artha means material gains. Innovation, knowledge, material gains. Yep. So this is why the person is all about the status, material gains, ego, pride, luxuries, real estate, because his focus will remain in the matters of accumulation. Accumulation is his focus. And now you understand it's not a coincidence that you are learning astrology and including me, we either have moksha or we have the dharma as our, where the ascendant lord is sitting. This is the first sign of that person is righteous. He is following his duty. He is following his wisdom. And always been on the righteous path. People who have very strong karma, they have very strong urge of fulfillment of their desires. They sometimes cross the limits also. Because they, they act to work in the matters of sensory pleasures. And moksha is where person says, I don't want anything in my life other than the liberation from the cycle of life and death. If you understand this concept and open anyone's chart, you will see truly how the things fit into their, picture, into their chart. About their, their life, about their personality, also about where the focus will go, where the activity of life can go. You can add more things into it. You can see where the sun is, where the moon is. Now, in my case, moon is my ascendant lord also and my mind also. As I told you, the three major things, sun is your soul, moon is your mind, and your ascendant lord is your activities, what you do in this life. Now, in case of Lenis also, moon becomes an ascendant lord. Right? And in case of Donald Trump also, son is ascendant lord also and son is a soul also. So ascendant lord, son, both sitting in the house of Artha, this person will be magnifying double the power activities into the matters of gaining the material success in life. Getting into politics, name and fame becomes huge for them. Their reputation becomes huge for them, right? Because they're living a more material life. And if you see where the moon is sitting, like in your charts also, you can go one by one and see where the three planets are sitting. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the screens. 
Okay, we can start with uh, with uh, with Michael your chart. Let's see. I'm gonna close this. And I close this also. So if you go with the Gagan's chart first, which is already open, you see his life, his ascendant lord is already in the house of Dharma. And his son is sitting in the house of Moksha. See, this talks about the personality of the person will be very spiritual and righteous. And moon is in the matters of Kama, where he is doing his duties to fulfill the desires and to live a satisfied and happy life. He is doing his, his actions, his self-efforts. But two major planets are sitting in a very good houses of Moksha and Dharma. So this is how you can even put a one more level on top of it. Where are the majority of the planets sitting in someone's chart? Which house? If they are scattered, but the ascendant lord, take the ascendant lord, sun and moon as a major powers. But other planets, if they are scattered, then this person has a, the, the highs and lows about their dharma, artha, kama and moksha. But if someone has a very strong all planets sitting in one kama, or majority of planets sitting in moksha, or majority of planets sitting in dharma, then understand that person's attention and focus will go in that direction naturally. Let me open Michael's chart. This is how you learn, okay? And you will understand that astrology is not a fluke. It is not a science written as a myth. It is a real science. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth about you, the manual about your life. When you are born, when you buy a car or a new equipment, like I just got my telescope and I was going through the manual of do's and don'ts, right? How to fix it, how, which button should I press? When a baby is born, what is the manual? How do we know what we should be doing with the baby, what we should not be doing with the baby? What, how to progress their career? What is the life? What are the hurdles they may have in their life? Astrology is that manual. Okay. That's why we call it a Jyotish, the science about the future. Now look at your, your ascendant lord, Michael. Venus sitting in, see you have majority of planets sitting in 12th house. Moksha becomes an important factor of your life. Liberation, that's why as you're growing older and older, you are getting more and more spiritual. Something is keeping you awake at night to become more spiritual. 12th is house of awakening. 12th is house of sleeplessness. That something is internally calling you. It's a voice of the universe which asks you to wake up. This is a time for you to wake up. This is the birth where you need to get enlightened and may not come back to this life as a human being. Look at your son. Son is sitting in the, in the house of um, Artha, which is accumulation. And my son is also in second house, which is, it's not a bad house, bad wrong things. It's like your soul is also, you need to accumulate some wealth and knowledge. Second is house of your knowledge also. It's house of your speech also. Right? And your moon is sitting in, again in the sign of Moksha. See, your ascendant lord in Moksha and moon, what you think internally in your mind, emotionally is also Moksha. You want Moksha. You want liberation. You want enlightenment. You want the connection with the higher spiritual energies and the cosmos. And that's what bringing you to learn astrology. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. And you're going through the dasha off. We'll talk about the dashas, how to see that. But if, you go, if you're going through the Mars and Moon dasha right now. Any questions? Yes, so we, we were. Monish, can we should only follow this KP chart, or we should, because I'm so because I was looking at Lagna first. Now you've told KP, so or is going to be a hybrid Kaspal of Kaspal chart is what you call a KP, right? Yeah, Kaspal chart with Placidus house system in India they call it KP, but this is this is the chart you should follow. The position of planets are always seen from this chart, and I'll come to this slide next. This is the chart which talks about which zodiac signs the planets are sitting in. But the position is here. This is the position of the planets. If you see his Saturn sitting in the sign of Cancer, but Saturn is sitting in fifth, in fourth house, not in third house. Okay? Always planet position is always seen from this chart. And when we start reading the chart, we'll also come here that where is the second Lord sitting? Look at this chart. Where is the third Lord sitting? Look at this chart. Where is fourth Lord sitting? Look at this chart. Okay. 
there's two number threes in my second and third house. Yeah, you because know? I'm coming there. I'm coming I'm, there. Okay, I'll tell you why there. it's number three are there, right? It's an unequal house division. I'll come there. This is a slide I have to cover in this in this class today. Yes, Nanis. My question is, is there's a difference if of him having the moon in the fourth house and having it in the twelfth house? No, from the Dharma Artha Kama Moksha perspective, no. Okay. okay. So you just write Dharma, Artha, Kama, uh -huh. Moksha. Okay. Yes. So we are just, okay. we are not reading the chart here completely. We are just looking one aspect of your life. When a baby is I'll... born, what is the activities will be revolved around? Wherever your son in Lord is sitting, in Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, these will trigger in his life, no matter what. This is a manufacturing of the car built on this platform. So only where the Ascendant Lord is sitting. Ascendant is the most powerful because where the okay. activities are. Your moon is okay. your mind, your, what you think in them. And sun mm. is how you, where your soul is. Yes, okay. Who you are, but, your astitra. Sun is your soul, who you are. Okay, let's so say, it, you know, he's a person of family, right? Mm -hmm. Michael is a person of family. Sun is sitting in family house. Mm -hmm. Michael wants liberation. He mm -hmm. thinks about liberation. Mm-hmm. Easy. Okay. So if I want to, if you want me to read your chart here, I know you won't let me go today if I don't read your chart. Let's see that. And we can see the three things. So first is always start with the ascendant. Okay. And Lenis is today's Lenis birthday. So we always share happy birthday, Lenis. Happy birthday. Yeah. It's awesome. So 20th of July, today is her birthday. And that's why I'm teaching her the Dharma, Artha, Moksha, and Kama. I have not taught her in the previous classes. Right, Lenis? Because this is my gift to you. I'm going to teach you who you are. I'm going to give you the gift of this. See your thank soul. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's why you see me smiling so yes. much. <laughs> your son, your soul. Soul means what you feel, who you are. You are a spiritual person. You are connected with the higher universe. You think is liberation also. Your moon and sun both sitting in the house of moksha. And also moon is your ascendant lord. So the three major planets in your chart are sitting in the house of moksha, liberation, spiritual awakening, enlightenment. But there's no That's difference if all three of them would have been in the fourth house, right? Yeah, it's same thing because it's moksha. Okay. That's what I just needed to make yeah, sure. So this house, that this there's house no and this house. We are just classifying the elements. These three houses are the house of moksha where a person wants liberation, enlightenment, awakening in their life. Okay, and similarly, this this house, this house, and this house, this triangle is your your artha. You want material gains, you want to provide service, and you want to fulfill the accumulation of your bank balance, your service, and your karmas, your success, your dignity, your pride, your image. Right? And this is karma. Karma means you want to do your actions to fulfill your desires, desires of you know communication, desires of Networking, desires of self-efforts, desires of building a good career, and desire of relationships, sexual relationships, intimacy, and fulfillment of your desires. People who have ascendant lord in the 11th house, whenever I open their chart, I tell them, you're very ambitious. And they agree on this instantly. Because they are chasing the desires. Okay? So this is one aspect of the chart. It's not the full chart. Just knowing, opening someone's chart and knowing where the activities are, what this person is all about is just by reading the, the three planets, the ascendant lord, sun, and the moon. It text, talks about everything about someone's life. You haven't seen Gaurav? Gaurav, shall I open your chart? You okay? Sure, sure. Okay. So, so this, if the person has the... And you know, when I when I take students in my class, this is what I see. I'm giving you the secret. This is what I see. Even when I see my clients also, the first thing I see is this, how much they are inclined towards astrology and what are they trying to achieve with astrology, right? So if you see his ascendant Saturn, again, I'm just going to write it here for your easy knowledge. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Okay, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. You see his son. Sun is in Dharma. Moon is in Kama. Okay? Relationship matters to him. His desire is to build the relationship deeper and stronger. 
and ascendant lord is saturn saturn is sitting in the house of dharma with sun together so dharma becomes the most important factor in his life righteousness law abiding wisdom beautiful and living life with lot of ethics but looking at his moon the relationship also matters to me okay so similarly the planets also talks about these things jupiter is a planet of dharma jupiter is a natural planet of dharma it always keeps you righteous venus is a planet of kama it invokes the desires inside you lustful desires luxuries sensory sensory pleasures they are all activated by venus mercury is your artha accumulation of wealth through your intelligence and ketu is your moksha ketu sitting in the house of moksha increase the the significance of person's desire to become a saint a yogi to let go the whole world and become a very strong spiritual healer or spiritual guru or let go all the material things because ketu has naturally a significator of spirituality detachment right detachment and it sits in the house of if it sits in the house of dharma and moksha like say mostly the moksha okay so moksha is this this and this if ketu is sitting in one of these houses ketu will detach you from this world if it is in the 8th house it will detach you from sensory and sexual pleasures it will allow you to go and seek more truth beneath this ground ketu in 4th house will make you detach from the home land home world from mother also again on the spiritual path and 12th house ketu means that i don't want to return back to this world no matter what so similarly the venus if venus is sitting in one of the kama houses this house this house and this house the people have strong strong ability to chase the dreams and the chase the luxuries of their life and they do it it's nothing is right or wrong we're not judging anyone in this i have venus in third house right and i have achieved a lot through my self efforts because venus is a kama kama means you're 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 going and seeking something and you're fulfilling that desire of yours and jupiter is your knowledge my jupiter is in 10th house in the house of artha jupiter is your knowledge is your wisdom is actually the planet of dharma if jupiter is sitting in first house like in case of gaurav see it is increasing the elements of dharma in his chart to highest degree because the planet of dharma is sitting in the house of dharma and if mercury sits in the house of artha like in second house sixth house he is it's sitting in sixth house for him and tenth house it gives you very strong results in the matters of accumulation of knowledge and wealth and resources in your life if you see gaurav chart he has dharma lord sitting in dharma house artha lord sitting in artha house and ketu is sitting in the house of dharma if this would be sitting in here he would have really been a very very you know a yogi kind of a person because then everything is all the triangles are meeting in his life it's a good sign to have and that's the reason you guys are so inclined towards astrology that even sitting so far from me something connected you with me and your urge your quest to learn is so high so high that you could not resist you had to come and learn astrology to fulfill your your thirst and it will continue to grow it's not that one class or one lecture or one batch will will, will fill it up it is now the flame is being ignited this flame is going to be with you throughout your life now you have to know how to use this flame now you have to use this flame in making the changes of people's life transformation of your life first first change your life and then start transforming the others life 
people who are associated with you, maybe your clients, maybe your relatives, your friends. And this is how the flame will continue to go and go and go and ignite many other people which has ignited you. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. So this is the chart, okay, which is very important. And this is what you should know, why we read the Kaspal chart versus why we read the Lagana chart, okay? So I'm gonna erase this. Okay, let's do drawing from here, yeah. So importance of Kaspal chart, we call it Bhava Chalit or some people call it KP chart. It's a Placidus house system, unequal house system chart, okay? And why it's very important? Because the Lagna chart I'm still drawing with my mouse. I'm not very easy with the, the stick, okay? So in the Lagna chart, every house is 30 degrees. Okay? Every house is 30 degrees. And the zodiac signs which are emerging from the elliptical belt, like these are the zodiac signs, this is elliptical belt. And the zodiac signs are coming here, Aries, then comes Taurus, then comes Gemini, so, so on and so forth. There is no particular length of any of these zodiac signs. Uh, if you are sitting, Let's say this is planet Earth, okay? The first thing is you need to understand the planet Earth is not perfect round. It is not round. It is spherical in shape, just like an egg. If you take egg, let's say, Mike, you order pizza. Pizza is perfect 360 degrees. If I want, if I ask you to make 30 degrees slice of this pizza, you will make 12 pieces out of it easily because it's, it's perfectly round in shape, right? So for pizza, which is round in shape, you can divide it into 12 equal halves of 30 degrees to make complete 360 degrees. But if I give you the egg, I give you egg, go and get an egg from your refrigerator and try to draw 12 houses on the egg, 12 partitions on the egg, right? So egg is this shape, egg is like this, okay? So what will happen is you're dividing this into, let's say the first one will go there here. Second one will go, let's say here. Third one will go, this is here. Fourth one will go here. You see, as the, the shape is changing, some boxes are bigger and some are larger than that, right? It's simple geometry, simple geometry. Similarly, when we draw the Lagna chart, we create the equal house systems. Equal house system means each house is 30 degrees in length. Each house is 30 degrees box. Now, when somebody is born, let's say this is planet Earth, and somebody is born in, in Mumbai, in India, there's a longitude and latitude, which is a point, like say this is a point where Mumbai is happening to be. From this point, if you see the elliptical belt here, this is elliptical belt where the zodiac signs are coming. There is no guarantee that Aries is 30 degrees or Taurus is 30 degrees or Gemini is 30 degrees. It is how this person standing here is visibly perceiving these signs coming and going. So Aries could be 45 degrees length, Taurus can be 50 degrees in length, Gemini can be 60 degrees in length. How it has been perceived from this point? Similarly, if somebody is born in London, London is pretty north in this point, for them, the elliptical belt will change. This will become even longer. If you see, the, the last corner becomes very longer. How you see this belt in your horizon. So, in the Lagna chart, we don't care about the length of the zodiac signs. We just cut them into 30 degrees and fit them into this box, into this container. Okay? And that's the notion what the Jyotish, most of the Vedic astrologer take and start reading this chart. But when the most research were done, even in Sage Prasha, the father of astrology, he never used this technique. He also created a 
चलित चार्ट विच इज कॉल्ड अ भावा चार्ट इन इंडिया many astrologers who are learned who are coming from scientific background they give this chart the more importance the but the astrologers who are coming from their family lineage they're not well educated they don't understand astronomy they don't understand the science and the they they live with the fictitious and the superstitious model they continue to work with the lagna chart so the chale chart says that no do not cut these into 30 degrees the zodiac signs taurus aries gemini cancer if they are bigger than 30 degrees let them take two houses let them take three houses we are not because that's a real thing which, which is being perceived by a person standing on the earth where the the birth is happening astrology is all about how we are being we see the glow from the from the earth so astrology is all about this somebody is standing at this location on a planet earth and how the planets above his head is influence that person it's a geocentric model not heliocentric heliocentric means how the earth is being seen or the planets are being seen from the point of sun if somebody is born on sun what was the location of the planets from the sun that is heliocentric heliocentric approach western astrology uses this approach in many cases especially in financial astrology but we are not born on sun we are not born on jupiter we are not born on mercury we are born on earth so so people living on planet earth we are being influenced or affected by the planets orbiting around the sun within the same universal belt and these are the the nine planets and i'll come to rahu and ketu they are shadow planets so what you perceive is what is the location of your planet if you are born at this point in the earth and you look at the elliptical belt when the torus was rising if torus was 30 instead of 30 degrees or 45 degrees we take your first house as 45 degrees your first house becomes 45 degrees and then we take the second house if the second zodiac belt after taurus is gemini is only 25 degrees then we take second house only 25 degrees so the the houses are shrinking and expanding based on what you see astronomically as a phenomena happening in front of you whereas in this case we are cutting the zodiac sign and putting him into the container of 30 degrees and that's the reason the position of the planet changes when you compare these two plan these two charts the real chart is the cuspid chart the planetary position and i'll show you some of the examples on jagannath pura just to show you how does it all fit into the bigger picture if you see jagannath pura let's say i'm going to open this software let's say somebody is born right now okay right now in edmonton if you go to houses see when the lagna is happening so if you take this this condition placidus house system unequal house system ascendant from the first house see the degrees of first house 14 degree scorpio 14 degree 25 minutes till 21 degree sagittarius is it 30 degrees 14 degree scorpio till 14 degree sagittarius is 30 degrees And plus six, seven more. So thirty-seven degrees is the first house. Second house starts from where the first house ends. Twenty-one degree, eleven minutes Sagittarius. I hope everybody knows how to read this geometrical sign. This is the degree, this is the minute, and these are the seconds. Okay, three sixty degrees is a complete circle. Everything will add to three sixty degree if you total it. Okay. so the first house the first cusp that's why they are called cusp not houses cusp means unequal houses and houses means equal length cusp means which can shrink and expand based on the degrees based on the how the things were observed that day when the person was born somebody is born in edmonton right now right if you see the lagna chart see saturn is in third house but it moves to the second house with jupiter jupiter from fourth house is moving to second house in the bhava chalit chart and it is showing us here also if you see 
If you see here, where is Jupiter and Saturn? In the second cusp. It is not showing in the fourth cusp and the third cusp. This is a real picture. See, first cusp started from 14 degree and ended 14 degree Scorpio. And after Scorpio, the sign comes Sagittarius. So it is 37 degree long, the first house. Now, second house is 21 degree Sagittarius till 8 degree Aquarius. It is not even 30 degrees. Sagittarius, 21 degrees, plus 9 degrees, 30, plus 8 to come to Aquarius. So 9 plus 8 is only 17 degrees. So second house is only 17 degrees long. Third is from 8 degree Aquarius to 27 degree, sorry, 16 degree Pisces. This is the middle part. Mid, where is the middle of the house happening? So 8 degree Aquarius till 16 degree Pisces. So 8 till 8 is 30 and then 8 more. 38 degrees long. Third cusp. So all these cusps will be unequal in size. They are not 30 degrees each. The size is determined by the zodiac signs, how big the zodiac signs were. Perceived, seen from Edmonton, where the person is born, this longitude and this latitude. And that's the reason the birth time is, not only the birth time, the location of your birth also matters a lot in the accuracy of your chart. Understand? So, if you take an experiment, take an egg, and start making 12 equal, equal divisions on that, you will see one division will go bigger, one will go smaller, and so on and so forth. It's natural. My, my daughter has tried to do it multiple times, and she plays around it, and she's never been able to create 12 equal halves of, of geometrically aligned shapes on the egg. But if it is a true circle, then you can do it. Right? Michael can order pizza and he can divide that into 30 degrees each to create 12 equal slices. So that's the reason practically, logically, scientifically, astronomically, Kaspal chart holds the real value and the real truth about you. I have seen so many charts all through my duration of being an astrologer. And the moment I read charts using the Kaspal chart, I connect with my clients like this because they can understand the true picture. Many of my clients have been astonished and surprised that how you could be that accurate compared to other Jyotish, because I am not reading the text from here, I'm reading the position of planets from here. And that is where your accuracy of 80% goes to 95 or 98%. And that's the reason you guys are a student, because I have seen your charts also. There was something which connected you towards me. Otherwise, there are many Jyotish who are teaching astrology. Right? Well, you're the best one. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. So, Gaurav, did I answer your question or you have a question? You have any, any doubts in here? Yeah. So, I, I got the logic. Now, when, so when I'm going through various apps, one is Aura Soft, I've already got. Now, I'm looking at Astro Sage. It shows me different difference in KP system than what I see what you displayed in the Hora. So why there is a deviation? So Astro Sage also has a setting. Go to the preferences and pick Placidus house system. Number two, the, the free softwares, they use a different ephemerises rather than the paid softwares. Always be aware of this. This is an ephemerises, okay? We call it Pachang in Hindi, ephemerises, where the planetary position is written every day. Right? So the ephemerises used by Astro Sage is different version than used by the paid softwares like Horosoft. Even the ephemerises of, if I draw a chart using the Jagannath Hora, even your chart, you will see there will be some degrees mismatch. The free softwares do not buy the expensive ephemerises because they are giving the free software. Nobody's paying them. And then they do, do not update the ephemerises every year or every month whenever the new release comes in. That is the reason you can, as a hobbyist, use Astro Sage, Jagannath, or many other free softwares. But when you are becoming a professional astrologer, you need to use an astrology software, which is using the current ephemerises and update them, the new versions, every year. And that's the reason. You will never find the, the accuracy between the free softwares versus the paid softwares. Is that fine? Yeah. Yeah. 
So try use Horosoft, okay? Every time. And also so look really at the settings that you use on Estrosage and on the other free softwares. But you will still find the variations, okay? So, so paid softwares, that's why they are expensive because they're putting money in there, labor in there, supporting it, right? Otherwise, I would have taught you the free software also. But they are not... ODA, we should always refer to <coughs> Lagna and uh, the uh, planetary movement you're saying, Kaspal. So that is how it yeah, is. We'll come there. We have, to, we have not even covered that, right? So you, we'll go through again and again multiple basics of the charts, how to read the chart, okay? We'll come there. So all you need to know right now is... If you want to see someone's planet position, look at this chart, period. And that will give you the real exact answer, the, the right answer for your questions. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so I covered this in the three main tripod of your life planets are, planets are, Sun, Moon, and the Ascendant Law. These are the major, major planets. This can actually tell about anyone's character instantly. Where is their Sun sitting? Where is their Moon sitting? Where is their Ascendant Law sitting? This tells about everything about one person's life, that where his soul is connected to, what he feels he is. 10,000 is egoistic. Okay? 6,000 is connected to the job and connected to the depths also. So we'll talk about the houses when I come there. But looking at sun, looking at moon, moon is how the person feels. And the ascendant lord, what are the activities this person will do in this life? Three planets talks about the tripod of your life. Similarly, the house number one, five, and nine, they are the tripod of your life in the matters of houses. One, five, nine is your dharma. Without dharma, you are not a human being. Understand this concept very clearly. We have three gunas in us also. Sattva gunas, we talk about in planets they have it. We have rajas also rajas. and we have tamas also. Dharma, these three houses make us more sattvic. sattvic. Sattva means gold. The person is righteous. The person is godly natured. Rajas means a person is chasing material benefits, lust, desire, greed, money, material, status. And tamas means animal instinct, rapist, murderer. So we all have these three. And tamas means living in fear also. That somebody will kill me or either I kill someone. Animals live in this, this state of mind, tamas. Animals are always living in the tamas state. And that's the reason you as a human being, we have the three, all three inside us. Our purpose is to remove this, remove this and gain more of this. If you happen to have more of this, let's say your actions, your free will is in your hands. Nobody can control it, okay? If through your free will, you activate more tamas gones in your life, you become a terrorist, you become a murderer, you become a rapist, you become a, all the bad deeds, right? You know, substance abuse, you know, alcohol abuse, you know, killing, living in fear, negativity. You are gaining so much of the tamas guna that when you are dying, when you are dead, your mind has a snapshot of the tamas gunas. And now naturally, you will be attracted towards more animal bodies, not human bodies. Your mind will go towards animal bodies. If you are happen to be in a rajas state, when you die, rajas means you are living a life of a king, you have multiple girlfriends, multiple homes, you are a successful person, actor, director, or maybe some very normal successful person life. You will seek human life, human body. Because you want to come back and fulfill these desires again. You are, you, when you are dead, when you are dead, your mind is always alive. The energy never dies. The mind has a snapshot of your values and beliefs and your lifestyle. What are your desires? Are What you lived in this life is a snapshot in your human mind. And this mind look for another body. And it has been presented by the equation. It has to fulfill that equation and find a new body. If it is always fear, like say suicide, Fearful killing, mishaps, tremors, traumas. You are putting yourself into the state of tamas guns. And then your mind will be fixed in those brackets. And it will look for a body of an animal. Dog, cat, or reptiles, anything. This is what taught in Buddhism also. That how a one, you know, how your, your soul finds a new body. 
and transmigrate. Yes. Is, is that why they say it's important to be careful what you think? This is very important is what you think, what you do. Okay. Your actions are putting you in these states, either sattva, rajas or tamas guna, gold, bronze and silver. If you are more sattvic, you're helping others, you're doing your duties, you are living a life with the natural, you know, things in your life, like eating good food, not even eating a junk food or a, you know, um, a frozen food. Frozen food is tamasic. Okay. Poison. Yeah, it's poison. It's a tamasic, right? Even non-vegetarian, a lot of non-vegetarian is also tamasic. So sattva gurma is like vegetarian, Ayurveda, astrology, learnings, helping people, donations, always cleaning your mind. Your thoughts are always pure for others also. And then you are not attaining the body of humans. You are attaining the body of devatas, the gods, the celestial objects who are celestial people who are living in this universe. But as a human being, we cannot live the, this life thoroughly. And that's the reason our Venus has been given in our chart. So the, the way we have been programmed, we, we are being given some sattva, sattva gunas, so that we live as a good human beings and worship our God who has made us. Okay? But then to activate our Rajas Guna also, now God also fear that if this becomes, this person becomes God, then what will happen to me? So that's the reason they gave us a Rajas Guna also, so that we have a desire to, desire to lead a sensory life, desire to lead a, a life of ego, life of lust, life of pleasures. And those life of lust, desires, will keep us continuously in the loop of being a human being always. It will not allow us to become God, the demigods who programmed us, right? So they did it, the programming virtually to us so that we originate, we do the, we, we indulge in sexual activities also so that we can reproduce. And also the sex will invoke the desires, the lust. And we always remain human beings, even though we are doing a lot of pious works, we are sattva, we are living a good life, we are morally doing everything good we can, but we are also connected to our duties of living a family life. And that family life is Rajas Guna. And then if you become a politician, you have a social status, you become a celebrity, this Rajas Guna is activated highly because your ego, your pride, your image is, is, is continuing to bind you in this state of your mind that people, you know, come to you, people seek help from you or people just, you know, wherever you go, they put flowers in front of your, in front of your feet. They are worshiping you, right? So this is what happens to the big politicians and big guys. They live the lives of life of Rajas. We are living this mix of both, depending how much we have this and how much we have this. But if you put yourself very down, go into the Tamas Gunas, Tamas Guna is ab abusive language, abusive deeds, right? And then, you know, killing someone, raping someone, you know, no emotions, nothing. Then you are activating this so much in your life that you are, your, your, your mind in that state will find a, a body of animals. That's the reason in India, many people, especially the Brahmins, they don't even eat the onions and the garlic because onion and garlic has the tamas gunas. Right, God? Mm. If you see many people, I know many people, even my friends, they say anything which is originated from the, the belly of the earth has the tamas gunas. Mm. They don't even eat anything which is like garlic and ginger or the onions. Should I stop eating? Say, Should say, I stop eating this stuff? Beating what? Should I stop eating that stuff? No, no, no. I'm not saying. Even I eat it. Like, nobody can live without onions and garlics and ginger, right? So yeah, you have to just balance everything. Right? Stop eating the junk food or stop eating the frozen food. Frozen food is very bad. It's a tamasic nature. Right? And non-vegetarian also. Like, I eat non-vegetarian because this is how we survive in Canada. Otherwise, it's so cold. I may be, you know, uh, 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 hyperthermia can happen. So we have to eat non-vegetarian. But, you know, you limit it. Eat more curd, eat more milk, you know, drink more, you know, healthy foods. So then you're increasing your sattva. And again, what you eat is what you are. Our mind is activated as what we are eating, right? If we are eating a lot of non-vegetarian, a lot of brutality goes inside us, right? The prejudice, right? The hatred, they all come from the tamasic food. The sattvic food, the Ayurveda food, Google Ayurveda food. There are so many recipes. And try to eat Ayurveda food at least once a day. And people in India, they fast. That's the reason they fast, because they want to activate more sattvic guns in, inside them at least once a day. Mm. Yes, Gaurav? Nothing, nothing. Nothing, okay. So understand this concept? 
your food is what your mind thinks after eating and what your mind thinks is whatever the state you live in and the state you live in and the state you die is the sole reason of what human body you get either human body animal body or a ghost if you let's say there is one more state of out of these and that's the state of a ghost no body nothing and this happens to people who are suicide who commit suicides makes sense people who become ghost are the one their karmas unless your karmas are dissolved fully you will never attain the new new birth the cement the karma is a cement which glues your your celestial bodies right so let's say i'm just going to give a little bit of spiritual lecture here this is your body michael this is your body you are pretty healthy six packs and good muscles but what when you die you will get a new celestial astral body astral body is body made of energy only and your mind will live in this body and this body is glued by your karmas the karmas and the actions what you have done in this life this is all glued the whole astral body is glued by the karma it's a cement which is binding your the whole astral body right the more stronger this 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 cement is the more you're going to live in the same environment where you died people who die they live in their homes for for years with the same family yeah. right and people can feel them right so if, normally if you see somebody die they will be they have just changed their state but they are still present they are in the same house they are doing the same thing they wake up at the same time brush their teeth you know put up their their clothes but all in their astral body and slowly and gradually when they realize that they are no more this existence is nothing this is a unrealistic state of existence then they start dissolving their karmas what is binding them the attachments they have attachment to their family attachment to their food attachment to their cars attachment to their property it's already there in their astral body the sooner they realize this that this is the state of myth they are living in they let go their fears they let go their property they let go their 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 material uh, greed they let go their attachments and then their the cement of this karma is dissolved and then they get a new physical body the new home to start again their life so otherwise you remain a live a life of ghost especially if if somebody has is is dying at very early age or dead with an accident or unnatural death you are too much too much connected to your physical self to your to your environment when you when you die you are not even expecting you to die right and that the karma layer is very thick but someone who's like 90 years old he knows it he may be living another 4 years 2 years he's arranging everything like he has already planned for his funeral paid his you know that's back to the world or you know or or given the inheritance to all their children because this person is is awaiting the the truth of the life that is departure so this person's karmas are already dissolved because this person is waiting that everything is given to whom i wanted to give i don't owe anything i don't have to give anything right so the karma layer is very thin and the moment he is died he can get a next birth within hours within one hour or two hours this 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 soul will get a new body Mm. but if this soul is like 44 4 years or 40 years or 42 years old with a lot of material attachment family attachment bondings you know my luxury car my luxury girlfriend my luxury house oh my god oh my this oh my that you know me myself i then the then this person will live in the denial mode after the death and the cement is so thick that it will take him years to resolve it mm. and that can happen in 10 years or maybe in 100 years or maybe one century and you'll be stuck the whole time yes you're wow. stuck that is the whole purpose of knowing why you know why the all the yogis and the spiritual gurus tell you to live mindful what is the reason of living a mindful right and i'll talk about that when i teach you the quantum physics in astrology but that this is all about mindful that your thoughts your attachments close your eyes and think how many things you are attached to mike if i take five things of yours whom you what you are attached to how will you feel you are attached to your family you are attached to your kids you are attached to your money you are attached to your property you are attached to your to your business you are attached to your girlfriend you are attached to your parents right and all of a sudden if it all vanishes finished done 
your mind will remain in the denial. It will say, no, I'm not quitting. I'm still here. No. But you are here with a different state. Your body is not there. Only the mind and astral body. And unless you realize it that you know more, you will continue to live in that state. Yes. This is what you are learning from me. Astrology and spirituality. The real truth of life. It's harsh, but this is all we, we all go through. I'm sure you will start thinking different way from now onwards about your life. Everyone. The past, the past couple of days, something's been happening. Like I've been thinking yeah. differently. Yeah. Now we know about the houses. We know we have 12 houses. So the, the, the chart is all about houses and the planets. The houses and the planets, the lords. So houses are what? Houses represents the inanimate entities of your subconscious mind. Houses are nothing. They are just the functions and the features of a radio box. Let's say this is the radio box. This is the radio box. Okay. It has all the features, the stations to catch, the frequency, what kind of music you want, the jazz, the rock, the country, or anything you want. The features are built in. But they are living in an inanimated state unless you plug it into a, a battery or an electric socket. All right? If you have a cell phone, cell phone have all the bells and features, but without the batteries, what will it do? It's inanimated. It's, it's there. It is, the state is there, but that state is in a, in a zero level. What activates this radio? The planets activate this radio, the features of the radio, the features of your cell phone. So houses are the inanimated, the static features of your life. First house is you. Second is your family and finance. Third is your self-efforts. Four is your mother, your homeland. Fifth is your creativity. Six is your job, your service, your debts. Seven is your relationship. Eight is your occult science, your, your struggles and transformation of life. And death also, longevity also. Ninth is your wisdom. Ninth is your higher learnings. Tenth is your karma. Eleventh is your gains. Twelve is your losses. These are all there. But in an inanimated in state, somebody has to come and bring the energy to it, life to it. The battery has to be activated. The electric socket has to be activated. And those activation happens by the planets. These are the conscious energies which activates or animates the inanimated entities of your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind has everything plugged in through your beliefs and the values what you're bringing in from the previous life. Your mind has traveled from one body to a new body and it has all the features. You know, when the child is born, even at the age of two years, child knows everything. There's been a scientific research being conducted on that. We think this is a new child, new baby born, and he or she may not know anything. Children knows a lot of things, a lot of things, which we think they don't know because they are bringing that knowledge from their previous life. It's only they cannot communicate. They cannot talk, they cannot tell, but they know everything. I have a client, Frank, he lives in Pennsylvania. He is a scientist, he is a scientist. And he knows everything about quantum physics. He knows everything about the scientific experiments on astrology. And he loves me so much because the way I teach the scientific ways, and that's why he's connected with me, and he explains the same thing to me, that the child is born with the complete knowledge. It's just that the children cannot communicate at that age. And slowly and slowly, what happens is their previous knowledge is evaporating and they're getting a new knowledge from their parents. Their brain is a storage house. The storage is also there. The microchip is there with the sand disk storage. Now, when you add a new data to it, the previous storage is, is getting erased. Right? So when the baby is born, the storage is already filled with the knowledge, with the previous belief, the previous values, the life they lived in the previous life. But what happened is, since they cannot communicate, they cannot talk, they cannot tell. And now they are living with a new family. This family is giving them a new knowledge, new values. And slowly the storehouse is, is erasing the previous knowledge and adding a new knowledge. 
but some still remains there. That's the reason some children are born with like a, with some fears in their mind, with some you know inhibitions in their mind, or some kind of a behavior which is hard to tell that where this behavior is coming from, right? Because the some dots of their previous life is always there. So going back to this point, these houses have the snapshot of all your previous life knowledge and the domains, but they need an energy to activate those subconscious minds realms, the inanimated things. And the planets, the lords, are the ones who activate these houses. They are the batteries. They are the current. They are the real energies. The planets are the real energies which activated your houses. That's why where the sun is, the soul is activating that house. Where is your ascendant lord is, the ascendant lord is activating that house. Where is the second house lord, finance? Activation of second house is happening from this house. I'll teach you how to see that. Where my career, my job, my success, my karmas is going, look at where is the Lord sitting of 10,000. This energy has been activated from that house. If somebody has 10,000 Lord sitting in 4,000, real estate, property, buy a property, sell property. Because your success is activated from this house. Right? Once you understand how to connect the dots, the astrology will become such a simple science to you. It is, even, it is simpler than even the arithmetic or the geometry what you do in your in your kindergarten in your in your high school i guarantee you that it's all about the basics how you think as an astrologer do not think as an astrologer as a superstitious or a pseudo scientist or a person who has just you know read five books and come and become an astrologer think astrology is a science is an art of living think that astrology can tell you teach you provide you all the information what you need for to know about a particular person Start thinking about what does planet does? What does sun represent? What does moon represent? Know about in your heart. Moon is your mind. Mercury is your intelligent mind. Moon is your emotional mind. Jupiter is your knowledge. Saturn is your transformation. And then put them in these houses and you know which area of your life they will activate. These are the channels, 12 channels of your radio box, which Saturn is activating channel number three. Jupiter is activating channel number nine. Sun is activating channel number one. What does channel number one mean? What kind of music you will listen to from channel number one, right? So this is when you know these houses, you can easily embed this together and get the real information instantly. Any questions here? Everybody's quiet. <laughs> I have a question. Gaurav looks so serious. Gaurav, all good? Oh, your, your camera is still... <laughs> no, no, I, I, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, you gave us that uh, Mercury is um, Artha. You gave us that Venus is Kama. Jupiter is Dharma. And Ketu is Moksha. Yeah. Uh, what is Sun, Moon, Mars, Saturn, and Ra? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But okay, thank you. These are the main four planets for Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. And the sun is for enlightenment, moon is for enlightenment, right? And then uh, Mars is for your courage. So we'll talk about that when we go to the next slides. So, but from Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha perspective, the four planets are the most important ones, right? They are the one which gives you the energy to go and fulfill this thing in your life. Okay? The sun uh, can also be looked as a King and moon King. can be. So, if you go back king. to this slide, let's say if I go back to this slide, see, mm. see this one: Satvik planet, Sun, Moon, Jupiter enlightens us. So, ultimately, the Dharma planets become Sun, Moon, and Jupiter. If you go one more level now, Satvik is Dharma, right? Rajasik is Artha, Mercury, Venus. Mercury wants us to go and fulfill our desires. Venus is also Rajasik; it's a desires gains, but also becomes a, the the Kama also because of the sexual pleasures it gives us, right? And then the Tamasic are Saturn, Rahu, and Ketu. These are the more... Ketu is a moksha, but Rahu, Mars, and Saturn are not. They are more like, you know, induce, uh, induce violence in our mind, Mars, especially if the power is huge. And Saturn produces negativity, fears, and delays in our mind, right? But Ketu is considered to be the planet which causes us go towards a moksha. So Rahu is also a planet which asks you to go for Artha, right? More material gains, follow your passions, right? This kind of thing. So you can classify from this slide also, but Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, and Ketu, they are the major planets which talks about the Dharma, Artha, Moksha, and Kama.
Okay, so this is how the houses are. So now understand the bigger picture of each radio station. I give you the example of that all these houses are nothing but a feature, a feature of a radio box, which will be activated by their planets. These are the inactivated boxes. It cannot do anything themselves unless the energy, the current has been passed and the current comes from the planets. The horoscope like this, this horoscope, if, I, if somebody has a horoscope like this, like this, that means nothing. There's no life. Life comes when the planets occupy these houses. That means you have a transistor or an iPhone without the batteries, locked and thrown somewhere, if you see this horoscope. But the moment you bring the planets in, then the horoscope is live. All the applications, your, your phone is, is activated. You can browse, you can do anything. Now it depends on where the energy is and what it is activated. So what does each house does? First house is your representation of yourself. Your appearance, physical body, identity, and approach towards life. This is your ascendant lord also. That's why we say this is ascendant house also. We call it ASC, ascendant, the rising sign in, in Western astrology. The most important sign, because this is the prime minister of your chart. If the prime minister is healthy and hearty, it will always give you the good results because the cabinet will be good. So someone's longevity, someone's health conditions, someone's you know, true identity of life is seen from the, the ascendant lord, where the first house lord is sitting and who is sitting in the first house. You also see that. We'll, I'll teach you how to see that. So understand the houses. What do they represent? House one is you, yourself. House two is your physical self. It sustains your physical self. And how I will teach you that. It is the house of your speech, family values, income, finances, money, all types of bank balances, gems, jewelry, and liquid assets. Second house is your sustenance. Why sustenance? Because it's a house of your food. If you don't eat food, your physical body will not sustain. So second house becomes the sustenance of your first house, of your physical body. House number nine is dharma, and now house number 10 is karma, karma house. One is you, two is your food, food you eat. You cannot survive without this house, second house, because you need to eat food. That's why the second house becomes the sustenance of your physical self. Similarly, your dharma, your karma, karma is the second house from dharma, your karma is a sustenance of your dharma. If you do good karmas, you are already adding more to your dharmas. See, first house, second house. Second house from first house is food. You eat food, that's why you live. Sustain your body. Now, second house from ninth house is, this is house number ninth house. Second house from ninth house is tenth house. Tenth is your karma and nine is your dharma. If you do good karmas, your dharma is being sustained. If you do bad karmas, you are letting go your dharmas, your ethics and your values and your wisdom. So 10th house is the sustenance of your ninth house. And first, second house is the sustenance of your first house. We'll go over this logic many times when we read the whole scripts. But understand how important these houses are. Now third house represents your siblings, self-efforts, communication, social activities, writing, valor, short distance travel. Everything is seen from the third house. Nothing to memorize. You will get to know it very easily. The software tells you also. But this has come to you as you practice more and more. Three things to notice. Do not panic. Do not get frustrated. And always practice. This is a mantra to learn astrology. Yes. So does karma needs to be there in order to have arma? Arta? No, no, no. That's a... You're going back to the same topic. So we are not, so we are talking about the houses here that uh -huh. your first house is your, this is not, we are not classifying them into dharma, artha, kama and moksha. We are just okay. putting them as the first house is your physical body. Second mm -hmm. house is the house of your food. If you eat food, mm -hmm. that's why your body is protected. Uh -huh. Right? So you're, you're, you're connecting it with like you do artha, then you get the dharma. You're connecting it this way. So don't okay. connect it this way. Even though artha is your, your material accumulation. You have to accumulate food in your body mm -hmm. to live your dharma. 
Dharma without okay. body is of no dharma. Am I right? But do, do you need house, whatever is in house number three in order to have house number two? No, no, no. That's not right. Oh, so these, the, these okay, other conditions okay. are not in all the houses. Okay, got the it. Houses Thank you. Here. So we okay, we'll come to it. that rule that second house increases the significance of the first house. I'll teach that rule also when we come to the predictive astrology. But right now is just understand the logic. Why second house is very important from first house. Similarly, um, the 10th house becomes very important from the 9th house. Okay. So house number 4 is your home, homeland, mother, real estate. So these are the domains of your life we can see from your 4th house. 5th house talks about your love, romance, passion, children, progeny, entertainment, creativity, intelligence, innovation, solution, previous life karma. So 5th house is one of the triangle houses. 1, 5 and 9. So this is also house of dharma. Very important house. And if you, I'll show you some of the examples and you will see that how the astrology fits everything what I'm teaching you right now. Sixth is house of your health, fitness, service, jobs, loans, debts, pets and servants. Seventh is all about your relationships, marriage, spouse, business, legal relationships, okay? When you are getting to a contract. Fifth is when you are in love. Seven is when you have a, a living relationship or a relationship which is now on the papers, like a contractual relationship. It could be a business relationship also. Okay? It also talks about your, your, your uh, physical intimacy. Seventh and eighth both talks about your intimacy. Seventh is your partners and your partnerships and your intimacy with your partners. Your physical partners, interpersonal skills, your daily interactions, everything is seen from seventh house. It's also business, being an entrepreneur also. Eighth is also pain and suffer, sudden ups and downs, intimacy, occult signs, this is a secret intimacy, okay? Seventh is intimacy, which is open to the public. Eighth is house of secret intimacy. I have taught it multiple times and I'll teach you 5, 8, 12 means an intimate relationship, which is secret. And I'll tell you the combination of how to see an intimate relationship. Someone start instantly, okay? 5, 8, 12 is also about learning astrology. So, so seventh house is your intimacy in a legal, contractual, publicly known relationship, like your wife. And 8,000 intimacy is when you are just enjoying your life with someone whom publicly is a secret enjoyment. Occult science, astrology, secret services, secret relationships, see, cyber security, lawyer, criminals, taxes, product development, engineering, everything is 8,000. 8 is a very strong house, very, very strong house. It can really give so much ups and downs to your life. Help you also get a lot of gains in life. It is a house of inheritance also. Any unearned money in your life is from house number eight. Gratuity, provident funds, insurance money, inheritance, dowries, they're all seen from eighth house. Unearned money, okay? Which money is coming to you, but you're not earning it. House number nine is wisdom, long distance travel, higher education, learnings, religion, ethics, law, philosophy, father and dharma. See, this is the house of dharma. Ninth is house of dharma. Again, the triangle of houses, one, five, and nine. Very, very important houses. And I'll show you something more to understand this, how the one, five, nine is naturally been the best houses in your chart. I'll show you in the chart. And 10th is house of karma, career, status, reputation, management, fame, long-term goals, image, political career, administration. 10th is all about your career, your success, your image, how people see you in this world. 11th is house of your manifestation of your desires, prosperity, expansion, fulfillment of desires, group activities, social life, social awareness, NGOs, multiple societies, multiple friends, strong network, for future wishes, ambitious gains, everything is house number 11. 11th is the house which gives you all the gains. And wherever 11 joins, when 11 will join with 5th house, you get gain from your children. 11 will join with 8th house, you get gain from the Money which is not being earned by you. Eight is pain and 11 is gain. Which is a money which comes with the pain. Any example? What kind of money you get when there's a pain connected to it? Stealing money, money, right? Stealing is not painful to you. It's a joy to you. <laughs> hard and money. That you actually work hard and you get that. No. Inheritance. 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 You got the money your father gave you, but your father is gone. So that pain you <laughs> you dowry right in india people get dowries right when they get married so they are getting the money but the pain is they are giving their freedom they are getting into the clutches the hands of marriage right 
and insurance also. How about the insurance money? Right? Insurance is only paid to you when you lose something. You lose your house, your car, and, and then the, the pain is there with a gain. So 811 is gain. So we'll talk about the combination of houses when we go there. But understand this 11th house is a very, very strong house. This is a house which manifests anything in your life. It can give you child, girlfriend, property, houses, insurance money, inheritance, right? Love life, kids, money, property, everything is 11th house. When it combined with the good houses, other houses. Now 12th house is healing, spirituality, solitude, karma, afterlife, subconscious dreams, foreign land expenses, investment, asylums, and hospitals. So 12th house is again, Similar to 8th house is very powerful house. On a good side, 8 can give you a lot. On the bad side, 8 can take everything from you. Similarly with the 12th house, if the 12th is activated and you are a spiritual person, then this is a good sign. Otherwise, it's a sign of your, your expenses and your losses in your life. So how you activate these houses is your free will. Understand this thing. 12th house is activated by some planets in your chart. Either you become a spiritual person, you start doing donations, or wherever you put your money in, you will end up having loss. Your free will, you have to change your karmas, your free will to change your fate. You know this is a house activated by the planet, that's it. Now what you do is your free will, right? 5, 8, 12 is activated. Now your free will is, is what? Either have a, either start losing money, 5, 8, 12 is a connection of losing money, right? Or you start learning astrology. Pain management, solution providing, spiritual world. Then 5, 8, 12, instead of being a poor combination, will become a good combination for you because you're putting your karmas in the matters what the planet is telling you to do. If you don't listen to the planet, then this will do whatever the planets decide to do in your life. Right? Planets are influencing us on the day-to-day -day basis. They activate certain houses in our chart. Right? But the controller of our destiny is us. Now, they will definitely influence your mind. Your mind is also influenced by the planet. You will start taking wrong decisions also. But if you know astrology, you will know where the trick is. You will know what the planet is tricking you, where your thought is coming to have a girlfriend and an illicit relationship also, because 5 8, 12 is activated. Now, to counter it, you can start learning something about occult science. Right? So I will teach you how the remedies work, but this is how you put your karmas, your free will. Your free will is your karam yoga. Even the Bhagavad Gita, what Lord Krishna has stated in the Mahabharata, in Vedic culture, in Hinduism, that karam yoga, only karmas can change the state of your life, your fate. Planets are the tricks. Planets are the mystery. Planets are the phobia and the hallucination which will produce in your mind to do this, do this, do this. But your karma stand tall and thick. What you decide is eventually going to change your life. And if you know both the sides of the coin, that the planet is activating this house, and if I do this instead of this, I'll get better results. Period. Your life is changed. Yes. So, uh, real quick. Um, so number eight, um, I understand what number eight is, and 12 is uh, the, the bedroom uh, pleasures, whatever. But the, number five, what is the, the five? Love, in regard passion. Love, passion. Providing creativity, okay? Five is house of romance. Love, romance, passion, children, progeny, entertainment, creativity, intelligence, okay? So, and then eight, so fifth and is house of your romance also, right? That's okay. the reason five, eight, twelve is a, is a love. The hidden love because romance, hidden on the bed. On the bed, guys, okay. <laughs> <I know. laughs> People get stuck sometimes to five, eight, twelve, but don't worry, five, eight, twelve also means that somebody's connected to the media industry the, as an actor, because sometimes actors are using their physical body, right? In the matters of making money also. We'll talk about in the, in the matters of career. Okay. But yes, so this is the combination of houses I'll teach you, right? How to see this. What planets are activating. So understand that karmas can override what planet is, what planet is saying, we, we cannot change it. Planet says, I am activating your 12th house and your 8th house. Now done. 8th is your pain, your multiple diseases, 12 is your losses you know something will happen to you on your physical body. If one is also there, one is your physical body, eight is pain, 12 is hospital. But you can change it with your karmas. You go to the hospital every day. The planet is saying, I'm going to take you to the hospital with a pain. So what you do is go to the hospital every day, sit in the cafeteria, eat your lunch there every day, and put some money in their charity, Who the person who is in pain. 
you are doing absolutely what planet is telling you to do but now you're doing with your free will and changing the course of your fate many remedies i have given to my clients in india that just go to the hospital and sit there for one hour or go to a place of isolate isolation and do something for the charities because this is planet is asking you to do if you are not doing it then you are bound to get the results what planet is deciding on you to that you will get sick meet with an accident and go to the hospital and then again you will put your money losses to recover yourself rather go every day acknowledge this thing in your chart that planet has activated these houses and how we see the activation of houses through mahadasha i'll teach you how and then you change your karmas to do the same thing what the planet is telling you to do with your cautious mind now not living in a probability that the planet will give you this result and then you will say oh it was my destiny nothing is destiny other than your birth your death your parents your father your mother your children and sometimes your wife also there are few things in your life which is destined to happen but not a day to day life is destined to happen nobody is destined to live a miserable life i guarantee you this people can change their life jeff bezos steve jobs how they change their life people say they were destined to be rich no they did their karmas to become rich they found the opportunities right mark zukumber went to india tibet he spent so many months in india in tibet to understand the astrology understand the spiritual nature steve jobs was the founder of uh, microsoft it yes he went to india right so look at their the, all the big guys they have extracted the opportunities knowing the astrology warren buffet warren buffet's his own biography he has never invested in any stock without consulting an astrologer he's a huge expert I found out that George Washington was a astrologer. Yeah, JC Penny, Google JC Penny said that everybody can become millionaire with their hard work, but to become a billionaire you need an astrologer. It's written on the JC Penny's mission statement also. Mm. It's not a fluke. People who says it's a pseudo science, they are the they are the people who live with the cage of okay, it's destined what will happen, I will take it as it is. And you are losing the big chunk of your success. You have an ability to change your life, transform your fate, okay? but you think it's a science which is uh, just a you know nothing right a garbage and then you live with the probability of whatever is happening you say oh it was destined to happen in my life your your that's the reason all the even if you watch the videos of sadgurus or all the spiritual leaders they all say the same thing your karma stands tall and thick you are the one who is deciding everything you can take a test right now michael drive your car with your eyes closed you are changing your fate instantly what will happen <laughs> nothing good nothing good <laughs> then you hit somebody and then you will say oh it was destined to happen will you say that no you did it yeah. you close your eyes it was not destined to happen but you you made it happen this way and then you say it was destined to happen right you can't blame anybody then yeah so that's why you have to take actions to change your life nothing will change unless you want to change people who live on the mercy of destiny are the losers i tell you one thing we have everything to control our life just like you have a steering wheel in your car to control your car now destiny is only then when the car has a mechanical failure while you're driving at a speed of 200 miles an hour then it was a destined to happen in mishap which was beyond your control right but if you are driving your car and if you're in your senses then you know how to drive your car <laughs> okay so again i'm going to this slide sun moon mercury venus just remember this by the by the blink of your eyes this will help you understand someone's life very easily what does this planet what does this energy every planet is an energy every planet is a celestial energy and the houses are the domains the domains and the channels they will activate now combine both things the energy and the and the the 12 houses place these energies on each houses you will get to know instant answer easy yeah where my mind is where my 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 courage is where my wisdom is where my transformation is where my limitless passion is where my detachment is put them here and make instantly you can read the chart any questions 
Okay, so these are the some slides. Just go over this very quickly. No need to remember. So we covered the the houses. Now we are covering the planets. Okay. So each planet has this nature. This is the nature of the planet. Sun, Moon, Mercury represents our soul, emotional mind, logical mind, compassion, love, luxuries, desires. Mars is the courage, dominance. Jupiter is wisdom, expansion, knowledge, dharma. Saturn is pain, transformation, delays in life. Rahu is your passion and your desires coming from previous life. And Ketu is your detachment, spiritual images. Right? And then what does all planet does is planets are aspects. They expect from wherever they're sitting to the seventh house. Every planet expects the seventh house. Every planet, including Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn also. Rahu and Ketu, we don't consider their seventh aspect because they are always opposite of each other. Okay, and I'll teach you Rahu and Ketu, what does it mean in the next class? If sun is sitting here, it is expecting this house. If moon is sitting in here, it is expecting this house. If any planet sits here, it is expecting this house. If any planet sits here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's expecting this house. Any planet sits here, it is expecting this house. So all the planets expect, expect means look. And expectation means the vibrations of the energy is also falling in that house. If they are sitting in this house, let's say, Mike, you are sitting in your house, Pennsylvania, right? And you have a full control over the house. You're sitting in this house. Nobody can come without your permission. But if you also have a, 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 you know, a surveillance camera where you can see the house of your neighbor, right? Even though you're far, but you know exactly what's happening here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so your energy is influencing this house also, right? And especially if this house owner knows that Michael is always watching me, then this owner will change its stance. He is either comfortable or uncomfortable. Right? Because let's say you, this is your ex-girlfriend living in here, and this is where you're living in, and you will always have a 24-7 surveillance on your ex-girlfriend. Now, she will be comfortable or she will be uncomfortable, depending on what kind of relationship you have with her. If you are a friend, a lover, a being person, she's okay, you know, Mike is watching me, he's enemy entertainment, he's having fun, I'm having fun too. But if she's your ex who hates you now, she will be uncomfortable. That why this guy is always chasing me, following me, stalking me. Right? So that is where the friendship and the enemies of the planets come into the picture. Who is a friend of whom? But aspects plays a very important role. It is the vibrations which vibrates the houses through your energies. Not physically present there, but having a surveillance camera sitting there. So every planet aspects seventh house. Sun, moon, Mercury, everything is seventh house. Now, special aspect is Mars, Saturn, Rahu, and Jupiter. Mars not only look at the seventh house, it look at the fourth and the eighth house also. So if Mars is sitting here, it is not only looking at here, it's also looking here. And fourth house, one, two, three, four, this house also. If Mars sits here, seventh and eighth, fourth. Wherever Mars is sitting, it's looking at the fourth house, Seventh house and eighth house. Saturn will look at the seven, three, and ten. Jupiter will look at seven, five, and nine. Nine, nothing to memorize, but just it's a fundamental rule, principle you have to understand. Rahu and Ketu expects fifth and ninth. Okay, their seventh aspect is not calculated because they are always retrograde. A, they are always retrograde. They are also always in the reverse direction, and they are always one eighty degrees apart from each other. And why this is so? I show you. Let me draw it here. So let me back to my sketchboard. So let's see if I can draw. Oops, where's my cursor? Yeah, right here. Oops. I'm just trying to find my cursor. Oh, it's not there. Okay, so let me go with this one. So let's say this is our, this is our sun, planet sun, okay? And this is our Earth. E. Earth is revolving around Sun like this. Right? We are orbiting against Sun. Now, here is our Moon. This is our Moon. 
moon is orbiting earth not orbiting sun this is the the revolution the course of the moons around the earth now there are two points where earth revolution around earth sorry the moon revolution around earth is meeting the earth revolution around sun this is point a and this is point b understand this is moon our dear moon this is our earth earth is going this direction like this and moon is going this direction there is there are two points in the cosmos where this the moons travel towards earth around the earth meets the path of earth which is going around sun and these two paths are becoming the these two connections the intersection points are the rahu and ketu mm. okay right so they are always opposite of each other 180 degrees they are shadow planets they are not planets they are not cosmic heavenly bodies which you can see with the telescope it is an arc of earth rotating around sun being dissected by moon rotating around earth can you say a black hole like a black hole yeah it's 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 it, you can call it anything black hole or just an intersection point but this is where the shadow is is created the rahu and ketu that's why they are called the shadow planets they don't physically exist but they are the more strongest planet because whosoever living on the planet earth we are under the bound of these blocks these are the karmic blocks produced by rahu and ketu you can run but you cannot hide this is what they tell this rahu is material passion gains and ketu is spiritual gains people living on earth are either living a life of material gains desires what we are living now is or they are living the mostly the spiritual life that the moksha liberation is their ultimate goal which happened 5000 10000 years ago so these are the karmic locks the magnetic channels we have given on us on a human beings on any 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 living organism on the planet earth to live within the clutches of rahu and ketu and that's the reason you can run but you cannot hide because rahu and ketu is always keeping you intact within their brackets of either you're chasing your passions or you're chasing your your spiritual world is that what they call the trend towards rahu 99% people go towards where the rahu is sitting in the chart they they follow their their passion of rahu sitting in 12000 they go to the foreign lands rahu sitting in 9000 they keep working hard to learn something new or the travel becomes their 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 you know passion of life rahu sitting in fourth house people buy a lot of real estate so rahu is is magnification of your exacerbation of your desires rahu sits in second house it gives you the addictions addictions of all the alcohol cannabis drugs eating and also too much connected with your financial you know prosperity like you are so much into the desire of you know making money in this life right so rahu sits in fifth house you become a gambler your passion becomes a gambling your passion becomes taking risk your passion becomes speculation right so we'll talk about it when we talk about it, but understand the logic what is rahu and ketu why they are always they are always seventh house away from each other in anyone's chart that's why we don't consider their seventh aspect we can consider their aspect of jupiter 5 and 9 only okay is, is, is that what rahu and ketu does and rahu I'm, and ketu are the real karmic two points which is very difficult to get rid of in this era where we are living is is that what they call the south and north node yeah south and north node north node is rahu and south node is ketu north okay. node and south node the two points which i just drew it here gotcha good good question okay so the planets and then these are the relationship between the planets we have just two groups of planet one is called devtas the godly planets one is the evil planets okay so sun moon mars jupiter they belong to the this 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 group saturn venus rahu ketu belongs to this group even though venus is a good planet but we call it evil because it pushes us towards sexual desires the lust and mars is actually a planet of you know a, a malefic planet but it's considered to be good because it gives us the courage to go and deliver the things without the courage we cannot do anything in our life the self efforts so these groups are mutual friend these groups are mutual friend these they are enemies of each other okay very simple logic this group is mutually friend 
this group is mutually friend but jupiter is enemy of saturn mars is enemy of venus they uh, they themselves are enemies they are enemies okay and the mercury is neutral to both both the group mercury is a neutral planet it is neutral it doesn't belong to any enmity or any friendship relationship it says i am neutral to all so nothing to memorize your software will tell you instantly but just uh, basics okay and the next slide is more like if you want to go more elaboration of who is the enemy who is the neutral you can go over this slide but the the snapshot the thumb of rule is this the the slide i covered above that oops that you make a two groups good planets evil planets and then these groups are individually friends but they are enemies of each other and mercury is in between which is a neutral planet very easy to remember sun moon mars jupiter friends saturn venus rahu ketu are friends but they are enemies of each other this is more like elaboration because some of the planets are neutral to each other so we have just drawn this chart also no need to memorize and we don't use this rule to be very honest we don't go for the friends and enemies why i am showing you this is because there's a reason behind it and i'll show you why i'm sh sharing this with you i'm going to go back to the charts now here you see i already told you that how important your first house is fifth house is ninth house is if you notice if this is a prime minister of your chart which is saturn in this case saturn has allocated this house and this house to his friends on saturn is the friend of venus and the mercury is a neutral to saturn so this three houses are always given to the friend of the prime minister or a neutral to prime minister never to an enemy open any one's chart let's say if if this is michael's chart and you can draw it manually also by using any ascendants you see venus venus is neutral to mercury and friend of saturn and that's why i'm telling you that this is not a fluke astrology is how the cosmos are been divided for each zodiac sign let's say if somebody is born with with fourth house third house as an ascendant if if there would be three that means mercury as ascendant right mercury 3 4 5 6 7 then it comes venus here right venus is a neutral to mercury 8 9 10 11 11 is saturn it comes saturn here saturn is a friend of venus any zodiac sign any rising sign you take it here if it is in aries here aries is mars fifth will become sun sun and mars are friends and 6 7 8 9 and jupiter all three are friends that's the reason these three houses are very 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 important in your life and that's the reason most of the people are wearing the gemstones of these houses why did i give you saturn my dear michael you understand now yes i gave you the ninth house the dharma house blue sapphire to wear it why you should see majority of people are wearing these these gemstones the three three houses gemstones this is the dharma houses i am wearing i have ordered my jupiter my, my and this is a mars mars for me i am a cancer ascendant so let's see look at lenis chart because lenis and my chart is almost similar lenis is cancer ascendant i am also cancer ascendant and if you see lenis and myself we both have i will teach you what is yoga karta the mars is the fifth lord jupiter is ninth lord and moon see moon mars and jupiter they all belong to one group right look at my slide they are all friends the prime minister always give the best houses to its friends understand this why because these are the best houses in your chart the prime minister always wants the cabinet the home ministry and the and the educational ministry given to the best buddies of the prime minister so every ascendant signs friendly houses are given to the friendly planet of that ascendant lord always it's not a coincidence okay it's a rule which happens naturally and is here mars she has a red coral and jupiter now she cannot wear jupiter because of some some reasons but again my chart is again the same i am wearing the red coral and jupiter of the ninth and this fifth lord i'll teach you how to get the gemstones but just understand the point that how important these three houses are in your chart you can run but you cannot hide these are the three houses which which defines the tripod of your life and if you see rahu and ketu they are always r r means retrograde 
You see, there's always an R in front of Rahu and Ketu. They always rotate in the reversal direction. Okay? So they are always anti-clockwise. They're always retrograde. And they're always seven houses apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See? Always. Anyone's chart. You take anyone's chart, you will see that Rahu and Ketu are always 180 degrees apart from each other because they're the two arcs. They're always revolving at the same direction, right? At the same time, in the same same uh, same pace. Seventh house. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But where they are expecting? One, two, three, four, five. Rahu is expecting here. And nine, here. Ketu is expecting one, two, three, four, five, here. And six, seven, eight, nine, here. So expect, how do we see the results of the planets? I'll teach you. But this is how they are forming their aspects. So I'm looking at this chart, normally we see this chart, okay? So from here, you can count it. So Jupiter is expecting this. Mercury is expecting this. Sun is expecting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this house. Moon and Saturn both expecting this house. Saturn is expecting one, two, three, this one also. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and this house also, right? So how to now define their, their results, I'll teach you how to read the chart in our like, next class. Any questions here? We have covered a lot of things today, okay? And uh, go over the slides, go over this recording. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, planets, houses. Planets, what does it represent? Houses, what does this show? And then the aspects. Understand this on a very, very you know, deep manner. You will not go wrong if you connect your basics very right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Good? No question. Thank you. Okay. Thank so you. I'll see you in my next class then. And if you have any questions, group chat is enabled. Feel free to reach out to the class members. Feel free to talk and communicate and collaborate. This is how we will learn all, right? Any questions, concerns, you can reach out to me also. You can put in a classroom sessions and, and uh, we all will study, read together, and I'll be more than happy to answer back your questions. Thank you, Manish. Okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank so you. Take care, everyone. Bye, Gaurav. See you in the next class. Bye. 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 Thank you.